Welcome back. I'm Peter Alsop, and this is my Songs to Chew podcast. This week, we have a song for adults and teens from my Disciples of Perfection album. It's called The Guitar. I wrote it in 1987 and recorded it with a cast album of a play I wrote with my wife, Ellen Gear. It's called Pie in the Sky. It lived quietly in obscurity until 23 years later when I put it on a second album in 2010, Disciples of Perfection. A lot of us musicians treat our guitars like our toothbrush. We'd really rather not lend it to anyone else to use. With our guitars, we might reconsider if the guitarist is very talented. We often think, yeah, my guitar would like to be played by that person. From all the time we spend with the guitar on our lap, practicing, writing songs, learning new material, there's a Stan Rogers song called The Mary Ellen Carter about a ship that sunk. The owners abandoned it, and the crew raised the money and salvaged her, raised her out of her watery grave. And every time I got to the last chorus, when I was practicing the song, for some unknown reason, I would break into tears and cry. Rise again, rise again, though your heart it be broken and life about to end. No matter what you've lost, be it a home, a love, a friend, like the Mary Ellen Carter, rise again. My tears fell on my guitar, and somehow that deepened my relationship with my guitar and made it even more special, delicate, personal, and intimate. I've been writing songs for more than 50 years now. I wrote my first song in 1963 as a junior at Admiral Farragut Academy in Pine Beach, New Jersey. It was simply called You Smiled, about a girl I saw across the auditorium at my first Shakespearean play on a field trip to Princeton University to see Romeo and Juliet. That, of course, was a song that examined young, unrequited love. Well, at some point in the next 10 years or so, I decided that for me, writing songs was not about making money. What was more important to me was the humanity or the humor in a song, whereas trying to write the next big hit single escaped me. I think my guitar appreciated me giving it that kind of a special voice. So when I wrote the song, The Guitar, I was very aware that speaking truth about relationships was much different, maybe more difficult and certainly more rare, than working on a song recipe to create just the right formula for a pop, commercial, humble, mainstream, not disturbing to anyone type of song a song that fits snugly into that special slot that only hit songs attain. Not me. And I know it's tough for songwriters who have a hit song to then take their financial gains and go off in another direction that interests them. Everyone around them wants them to do the same thing again and again and again. So I address that tension in this song. Here it is from my Disciples of Perfection album, The Guitar. Once I had a fine guitar, she taught me to play Her rosewood fingerboard had little birds of pearl and lay Her simple voice was clear, it had the ring of youth She had heartwood deep inside, so she always sang the truth And the days that I spent holding her were full of life for me She saw people clearly, and she sang what she would see Insecurities of lovers, trying hard to hold their pose The clash of children's colors when they pick out their own clothes The heartbeats lost forever inside those afraid to touch And the reasons people give explaining why they own too much when she sang with honest beauty of the love we might achieve then the people flocked to hear her yes they wanted to believe but when she sang about our problems they would say that she was wrong they told her she was crazy they said sing the pretty songs sing the pretty songs But she didn't stop her songs The people had to know She only sang them louder Cause she loved the people so When the comforts of the wealthy Are worth more than healthy kids When our trusted leaders lie And give us broken promises When the lives of all the creatures On the earth are on the line Then 
it's time for better answers Now we'd better find some time But the people wouldn't listen Even though she screamed and cried And the strain from all her trying Cracked her heart wood deep inside Her strings flew loose and wild And so everyone assumed She was just an instrument To finely tune Finely tuned for an audience of backs Too finely tuned with her heart wood full of cracks Too finely tuned to close her mouth and shut her eyes Too finely tuned to sing them Her simple voice was clear, it had the ring of youth, she had heart wood deep inside, so she always sang the truth. And the days that I spent holding her are full of life for me. She sees people clearly, and we need that desperately. She sees people clearly, and we need that desperately. As a psychologist and teacher of emotionally disturbed kids, I've spent a lot of time around folks with mental illness and disabilities, and I'm clear about how fine the line is between them and us. In many cases, it's not even distinguishable. Many folks perceive the world differently than the majority of people around them, what Greta Thunberg calls neurologically diverse people. They face an enormous pressure to conform and see the world like the rest of us, whoever us is. Seeing the world our way is often not on their shelves, and that pressure can be so overwhelming that it creates a break with reality, making their differentness seem even more extreme. And of course, the guitar's heartwood becomes full of cracks because the people only want songs that are familiar to them. Those of us who have only learned to value the functional parts of the world we inhabit can miss all the exquisite beauty around us as we try to avoid the ugliness we've experienced. In 1987, the song was part of Pie in the Sky, the play I wrote with Alan Gear that I mentioned. Our story was based on the old fable about the Pied Piper of Hamlin, wherein the good people of Hamlin Town had a huge infestation of rats. And one day an odd magical piper came to town and offered to rid them of the rats for an agreed-upon sum of money. The townspeople agreed, but when the piper played his magical tune and enticed the rodents to follow him out of town, they refused to pay him. They threw him out of town as well. Shortly after, the piper returned with a changed tune, and he led all the children in Hamlin away to a cave in a nearby mountain, closing the door behind them all, leaving the bereft parents of Hamlin without any children. Our play was a musical about the dangers of nuclear energy and the greed of the owner of the plant. Ellen acted the role of Penny, an alcoholic homeless woman who would rant about the nuclear power plant radiation and how it was poisoning the land around the town. She played guitar and spoke truth to power. I played the Piper's part as a school custodian named Pi. We had tons of kids in it. It was a great success locally. Maybe we should do it again and make it about global warming this time. The guitar contains an analogy for how people who speak the truth to anyone can be ostracized and punished for doing so. This is especially poignant these days as we dearly need our whistleblowers to let us know when things are corrupt and need to be remedied and rebalanced. Many people do not value honesty itself, but see it as something we must do so we don't get in trouble. Being honest requires that we know ourselves and what our limits are for accepting and participating in some of the many dishonest cultural endeavors around us. So, that's it for this week's Songs to Chew. Please spread the word about this podcast if you find it valuable in any way. I'd also love to hear from you. My email is peter at peterallsop.com. And you can find me on Facebook at We Like Peter Allsop or Songs to Chew. My podcast link is peterallsop.podbean.com. Next week, we'll chew on a song from my River of Life album. Let's not do this anymore. 
a song for our men and boys who still think women are here for their amusement and sexual gratification. Keep on out there. We need you to widen our circle of care. See you next week.